Thank you. And this is my wife, Anita, who's passing out our, our business card with a cookie. Um, we're kind of a rarity among farmers out here, as I don't, I don't farm any ground that my father farmed or anything. We started farming in 1981. Anita's granddad had a couple pieces of ground that uh, he had a lot of grandkids that wanted to farm it, but he made the rule you had to live there. Well, we just got married and we had nowhere else to live, so we put a trailer house out in the middle of a wheat field and uh, planted a whole bunch of trees, and that's where we started farming. I work for the Soil Conservation Service, which is now the NRCS. Uh, you all familiar with what that is? It's a, it's a government agency that helps farmers with soil erosion and conservation. I worked there for 10 years and gradually put farm ground together. Um, rented farm ground. Rented farm ground from other people. I have a lot of landlords, most of them, some live right here in Colby, most of them don't live around here. A lot of them couldn't find their ground if they came out here, they don't even know where it is. So I put that enough, put enough ground together that then after 10 years in 91 we started farming full time. Um, I guess Anita went to work in town then too, she was a director of nursing at the college for a lot of years. Our farm continued to grow just by blessing, and uh, at this moment we're we're farming about 8,000 acres. And uh, five years ago, my oldest son uh, was done with school and, and was newly married, and and decided what he wanted to do was come back to the farm. It was just uh, just right for us that I needed a hired man at that time, and so he came back. And then just last December, our youngest son graduated from Benedictine uh, with a finance degree. Mm -hmm. He had a lot of job offers and, and uh, encouraged him to go where his heart was. And that's him over there in the red shirt. He's out here with us. And this so, is where his heart was. Um, feel free to ask any questions at any time. Uh, one of the big things that, that we're big on is we're no-till farmers. That means we, we leave the ground covered with lots of residue. <coughs> um, if you, This has all been trampled down because we've been driving on it, but if you look between the corn rows here, you see all this residue, all this wheat straw laying here? That's from, we've, we've grown two wheat crops on here before we planted it to corn. And by, um, when I started farming, we did a lot of tillage. Everybody had discs, you know, and you worked all the ground up till it was nice and looked like a garden and everything. Well then, Every winter when the wind blows and we get some really strong winds out here and a lot of times we're pretty dry, every winter there's dirt storms. The dirt just blows so hard you can't even see to drive down the road. It's, it's dangerous. So by leaving all this residue covering the ground, we stop the wind erosion. We keep the wind off the ground. We keep the sun off the ground. When the rainfall comes, it, it doesn't seal off like it does if the ground's bare. It allows it to soak in. And so, when we started farming in the 80s, in this country it was all summer follow, which meant you grew a crop every two years. So for one whole year you would just fallow the ground, just leave it lay to try to build up moisture. Well it wasn't real efficient, but it was all they knew how. But due to technology that we have today and, and chemicals we can use to control weeds, we this field here um, has had two wheat crops off of it. Now we planted it to corn. This corn is yielding about 115 bushel an acre. And, and the wheat last year was really good, probably 60 bushel an acre wheat. So we're growing a lot more crops on the same acres. We're conserving the soil, keeping the wind from blowing it away. We're conserving our moisture. And uh, the amount of rain for years, yeah. yeah, the amount of rain that we get here, I, I don't know, well, a lot of you are from eastern Kansas or western, anyway. We get about 17 to 18 inches of rain a year. Uh, in eastern Kansas, you probably get 35 or 40 inches a year. So we get about half the rainfall here. So it's really critical. Every drop of water is really precious. We want to keep it on the field. We don't want it to run off or evaporate. So that's why we keep the ground covered with rain. Right there, you see the yellow globe on the top of it? That's a global positioning system that's reading the satellites in the sky. When this field was planted, it was planted with global positioning, so there's there's no overlap, okay? When you used to go out with a big sprayer with a 90-foot boom, it used to just drop foam marker to see where you were. And so you kind of sat there, and it's kind of like from here to your car, you're guessing where you are, so you, you overlap a little bit. You don't want to leave skips or strips in the field. 
So with the global position, there's no overlap. We don't, we don't double spray, we don't double plant, and so it makes us a lot more efficient. Uh, fact is, that combine will drive itself through this field. Once I get it turned around, it'll even tell me what row to go in. When I go on the road, I can push a button and it'll steer to the other end. When Grandpa's working the technology right. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> there is a glitch in this system, and that is that I'm almost 50. And uh, I have a little hard time with some of this technology.